This is Seagraph 2020, and we are doing machine learning for production, uh, automated processing solutions for visual effects. This is Matech Labs, and I am Tim Porter, and we'll be going over the myriad of different ways that we use machine learning, um, not necessarily in so much of a, this is a convolutional neural network, or this is deep learning or anything like that, but to provide the different ways and possibilities that machine learning can be used uh, and, and how they can uh, interest individuals going through. Uh, and so to that, we will get started. Okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am Tim Porter, as I've said. I am CTO and founder of Montech Labs. Uh, I am a serial entrepreneur. I, I've worked at Volumation, uh, also at Underminer Studios. Underminer Studios uh, been around for, shoot, uh, coming up on five years now. Uh, we did a lot of XR work for a bunch of different companies, everything from um, Microsoft to uh, Quantum Rehabilitation, which Quantum is the uh, second largest wheelchair manufacturer in the world. It was actually a pretty cool project. We took uh, the actual VR, uh, the driving control, so like if you have a joystick or, or anything like that. Uh, and we actually put that into uh, the VR experience. So as you went to physically drive the chair, you could either sit in the chair or they made a very special version that could actually come off. Uh, it would allow people to go ahead and, and drive uh, the VR experience. Actually, technically it drove windows, but um, that was pretty cool. Uh, we did stuff for uh, KPMG, uh, data visualization, different things like that. Um, and then, of course, Volumation <clears throat> was a uh, volumetric capture and processing solution, much more service-based uh, than what Montech Labs does, which is uh, fully automated uh, solutions, things like that. Uh, graduated uh, Bachelor's of Science from Full Sail University, also worked in games, movies. Uh, last movie I worked on was Alice in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass. Last game I worked on, I don't know, probably some of the car stuff that came out, iOS, Android stuff. Uh, although... I don't know, I still see games that I worked on or the tech I worked on that was in it that still come out on a regular basis. Um, for us, as far as Montec, we uh, went through Spoknik and Quantsite uh, Futures, went ahead and uh, put in on this round. Uh, and we have, in the, or I have very specifically, and, and uh, also my co-founder, uh, last three years, uh, got Intel Top Innovator Awards. We're part of the Intel Innovation Team. Uh, and then a uh, city of Austin uh, innovation award, which was super cool. Cause we didn't expect that was going to happen. Like we went up against like these really big companies, you know, you're like, Oh wow. Yeah, of course. You know, they're like, and this people and these people. And they're like, and under my studios. And it was just like, Badoo! and I'm like, okay. Uh, and so we ended up winning and that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, so uh, what is the core of Montech labs? Obviously the biggest thing with, um, VFX just in general is just how long it takes to do things. And, and, and that is because uh, most of the different tasks are, are fairly manual, uh, even if they do have automated systems. Uh, there's so many stop gaps and things that go through that. So uh, we go ahead and we do a lot of automated tools uh, with universal input and output uh, on a very private secure cloud that we have, which is actually in the same facility that runs DOD uh, uh, processes through and things like that. Um, so that is, that is the core of us. Uh, what is really also interesting is, is the way that we're using and leveraging, obviously, machine learning and how to distribute this machine learning uh, across our cluster, which we have a very large, uh, let, let's put it like this, our storage array alone is 11 systems uh, with over a terabyte of RAM. So uh, that's just the storage side, let alone our processing side. We have uh, over 100 GPUs, um, over 200 CPU, like lots of fun. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I could talk all day on that. So uh, currently what our feature list uh, includes, you know, optimized, uh, unoptimized mesh creation, uh, sketch fab visualization, point cloud visualization, GLTF integration, uh, voxelization, automated color correction, uh, mesh creation, decimation, cleaning, remeshing, texture baking, secondary maps, uh, and texture optimization. Uh, and a lot of these uh, are available to everyone to go ahead and utilize if you go to our website, which is montechlabs.com. Uh, and then some of them are in beta, so you might have to request them uh, to go ahead and be, be done. Uh, and then some of the ones that are coming up, which are on the bottom, are much more interesting. Stuff like uh, automated de-lighting, de-shadowing, uh, image resizing, uh, sharpening, cutout tools, auto-rigging, uh, full fax and wraps remashing, um, 
this one's my favorite is FBX uh, file encoding optimization, which actually does a single FBX file for an entire uh, volumetric capture sequence, including textures and meshes and everything all in once and the animation. Super cool. Uh, full green screen, uh, it says green screen correction, but there's also green screen correction and um, automatic rotoscoping and things like that. Um, obviously, a lot of this is super heavy machine learning uh, and most of it we're, we're currently in creation of and so we will uh, we'll discuss on some of those and then some of the ways that uh, we are using machine learning in the current ones that we're showcasing some of the videos and, and sketch out and things like that. Um, so this one is a uh, automated texture optimization uh, tool that we have uh, and this one uses uh, machine learning to go ahead and actually keep the image scale and quality as it goes along. Um, so it is it's a fairly interesting little tool um i can show the the scapspad version you know here is the, the hk uh, 8k mesh we can go over here uh and then that pops over to the other which is this is a 4k uh, and here's a 2k and it always zooms in really hard ah i should have brought myself a mouse it's the way the cookie crumbles, right? Uh, and then here is our 1K. And I think the the really big thing that that amazes, I mean, even even when we're talking about uh, people with really good eyes and, and everything like that, it's it's really hard to tell uh, a massive quality difference between all of these. And you're literally going to what is it, one sixty fourth the size uh, from an eight to a one. Uh, so so that's a lot of fun. Um, and. Uh, the next one is our mess decimator. Um, this one really does a lot of work to ensure that the uh, the actual edging and silhouette is kept. So most decimators uh, do a really poor job at at that. Um, but with the way that we leverage the uh, we we end up we end up taking images based off of how we want to go ahead and do the mesh. So as it goes in, it actually goes ahead and does basically a scan of the scan, uh, goes through uh, and then runs that again to keep a silhouette. And so it ends up doing a balancing kind of act between the two uh, meshes, between the mesh that is is optimized perfect and then the mesh that ends up coming out, uh, which ends up providing uh, the solution that we, we get, which is once again, super cool. Uh, and you can see that in, in this mesh here, uh, where you can see how it's done a phenomenal job and including this guy right here. Ah! We'll come back in a little bit closer. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that right on the, mm -hmm. this is entertaining. There we go. So as you can see in this guy right here, let's see if it'll actually give me just this location. Wonderful. Thank you, Sketchfab. Uh, so as you can see, this is a decimator. Most decimators will not provide a quality like this. Uh, and, and the reason why we were able to go ahead and do that was, was through the, the strength of machine learning. So if you notice this guy, I mean, obviously there is less than one uh, quarter the amount of mesh that's on here. Yeah, 4.9 million down to 2 million. So about less than half uh, of the mesh uh, to go ahead and do that. And, and the quality on that is just obviously phenomenal. So uh, that is a fun one. Uh, automated remeshing. Ooh, this one was a really fun one for me to go ahead and build. So it it does um, it does flow mapping uh, along the entire uh, surface. So as you notice the quadrillation and then uh, the flow linear uh, processing that goes across this. I mean, even looking at this mesh here, you end up seeing how, how the lines uh, actually run across and it understands a certain amount of, about not only the topology, but the topology flow and how to produce that topology flow to actually perform a really awesome result. So, uh, you know, it ends up getting uh, some flow that goes across this way. Uh, and as you notice, it, it does the edging and it does a really good job to actually make a sharp edge that's on this. Um, what's really weird about it is, um, normally when you do like a remesh or you do an optimization, uh, you're, you go, I want X number of polygons. And it's not quite like that. You, you go, I want this much crease amount. So I go, I want to make sure that the edges stay this true to the original. And that's that's how we get an asset out. So um, 
it's a little bit weird to kind of work with as a as a coder or as a person on the back end. But when when you deal with it on on our end, you know, you you just say what percentage that you want, and then it ends up sending it through and it does the math for you. Uh, so the UI on there is just just really really kind of simplistic. Uh, and actually, this one, yeah, it does that. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. That this one's this one's this one's kind of fun. That's like that. Uh, uh, let me go back. We can actually take a look at that one. Uh, so here is the big old original and we'll go up here and you can see how high res that is. Uh, and then this guy was like, yeah, 1.4 million. This guy goes down to 87,000. And it's, you know, I mean, like, look at the shirt, look at the quality that's on there. Um, provides just a, just a wonderful, wonderful mesh to go across, uh, especially if you're not using this for a massively hero asset. I mean, if you're going to use it for a hero asset, you take one of these guys once you get in there, but you know, this will be your second level of detail. This guy goes down to 28,000. Once again, same kind of thing uh, that's on this. And then you end up having a really, really low res mesh. So if you're trying to use this in a game or something like that, then you ended up baking in the secondary maps and things like that. Uh, like this. So yeah, it's 13,000. So this would be something that you would end up using uh, in a game with the secondary maps uh, to go ahead and keep that quality that you're looking for. So it's pretty fun. Um, uh, once again, this one is, so this is automated uh, texture reprojection. Uh, on this one, uh, it actually does uh, a considerable amount of, of uh, cage work. Uh, so it ends up doing, so, so normally when you do like a reprojection, you go, I have, and I want a cage that is this big, this many units. Um, the work on this was actually uh, very specifically to figure out how big the cage we want is. Uh, and so it does a considerable amount of work um, based on, of course, the original images uh, and then uh, the the other uh, kind of setup. So um, this, the other kind of uh, looks based on different angles. So it, it does a whole, whole bunch of work to, to make sure that the cage uh, is the appropriate size. Um, so that one, oh, no, go away. We don't want to show that. Uh, and so here's really cool. And this one's, a, this one's a really cool one. So you can see here is the original that's over here. Uh, and then here is the remake uh, that's over here. Uh, and it provides you the ability to go ahead and do whatever you want to do with your UVs, which is super important. Um, and then automated GLTF playback. And so I'm going to go ahead and play this on a video. This one doesn't necessarily have a whole bunch of machine learning in it other than how we end up doing the mesh generation on it. Uh, so uh, something that's a little bit different for our mesh generation than a lot of other mesh generations uh, happens to be not only how we found, find our cameras in three-dimensional space, uh, but also how we use that camera information uh, to go ahead and, and provide uh, secondary features. And, and once we get past our dense, uh, dense uh, process, how we how we get that uh, higher quality based off of the textural images, um, which is something that you tend to lose when you go through a, a process, especially most uh, photogrammetric processes. You go from an initial uh, and you get a high res mesh and you're like, okay, cool. I want to optimize it some. And then what do you do with those details? Uh, you know, one of the one of the big ways that a lot of studios do is they, they go in and they, and they hand uh, remap over all of it uh, and with different varying brushes. And so, you know, we've, we've gotten away from the hand remap kind of setup and, and this one uh, just ends up automating the process. And this of course is just GLTF on top of it. Uh, so this is a super optimized asset. Uh, the first one is like 10 megs. And then the second one is less than hundred megs uh, for a full body sequence uh, that's on it. So. And that's us with mod. We are so mod. All right, cool. Um, and then, yes, definitely everybody keep in touch. I don't know how much you can see. Is this actually overlapping part of my screen? Is that a yes? No? You can't see that? Cool. So that is the, I don't know how much it shows of the stuff. Uh, so that would be like where your image is of that is. But 
Um, so it doesn't overlap, so that's good. Uh, so obviously keep in touch. You can send me an email, uh, Tim at Montech Labs. We have a lot of really cool stuff that is also coming out, um, stuff like uh, motion blur reduction. Um, we have uh, machine learning color grading. We use a convolutional neural network. I promise I wasn't gonna do this. Uh, and it goes through and it understands what an asset is, as in someone's skin tone or something like that. And it realizes that that is the same asset over time. Uh, and then it redoes all of the uh, style transfer throughout all of your scenes. So if you want to propagate and you're, you want neutral grading across everything, it, it, it is like a nuclear blast. It does a wonderful job at that. Uh, and then we also have um, a style transfer uh, tool that's coming out as well. Uh, and that specifically goes through and it finds, uh, you, you feed it both the image you want to color change or color tone uh, or grade, obviously real terms, right? Uh, and then you go ahead and feed it the one that you want the grading to come from. And it actually does an intelligent amount of combination between the two of them uh, and things like that. So uh, obviously we are giving away credits, uh, $500 worth of credits uh, if you sign up and use SIG20. Uh, and that SIG is all caps uh, on our platform. So thank you very much. Uh, and I definitely look forward to everyone going on, not only our YouTube, uh, but also our Sketchfab, and we will be releasing a whole bunch of Unity assets coming up soon so that everybody can play with things individually. Thank you.